Psalms chapter 4. To the chief musician, a nigra, that's a string instrument. So now we're starting to see the hymnal of the Bible. This would be a psalm, it says a psalm of David. This was written down. This is given to the musician, Bobby Asaph. This is to be played on strings. And the main cause is in verse 2, the sons of men. And David's writing to these men saying, listen, why don't you just believe in God? This is David's, my own personal testimony, what God can do for you. God is wonderful. God is good. Why don't you just trust him? That's the theme of this hymn. But first he starts, hear me when I cry, O God of my righteousness. Praying to God. He has a need. He has a prayer. Thou has enlarged me. Made him bigger. Now, that's not, you know, David got fatter and fatter. And David's got wealth. He's got wives. He's got children. He's got Israel is growing. Jerusalem. He's got all these victories. When I was in distress. And David's life was full of distress. Have mercy upon me. That's a proper prayer. And hear my prayer. So we pray to God expecting God to hear, expecting God to answer. We don't pray to a God, oh, maybe he heard me. And we reach out to God and I pray to God, will you hear? Because God doesn't answer prayers instantly. We don't pray to God and boom, it comes the answer. And then sometimes in our Christian walk for David and men of the Bible, God, I've been praying, 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 praying. When are you going to listen? He heard. But we're humans. We're touched by this flesh. We, we lose faith. And when you go through the Bible and you look at sinners writing, and then you, you deal with holy people. If I've dealt with holy people. Oh, you know, I've never sinned. I dealt with a guy. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Well, David said, God, are you really listening to me? I've done that. If it's sin, say, Lord God, if I sin by, by losing faith in you, I, I confess it. Oh, ye sons of men, heathen, lost Israelites, children, how long will you turn my glory into shame? Aren't you guys just tired of trying to beat me up? Aren't you guys just try, tired of trying to put me down? Aren't you tired of fighting me and my God? How long will you love vanity? And that's nothing. Emptiness. You know, that's what all life is. And when we get to the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, everything that we've done not for God, and nothing for God for the great white throne judgment. But everything we've done for God in Jesus Christ, it's going to be there. Wood, hay, or, I mean, excuse me, gold, silver, and precious stone. What about all the stuff we did for ourselves? Wood, hay, and stubble, what is that? When the fire touches that, it just pfft, ashes. It's vain, sports, politics, material things, idolatry. It's vain. It's nothing. It's not going to get you nothing and get you no credit and nothing through God. Especially if you're a lost man. It's a great white stone judgment. And seek after leasing. Leasing is falsehood. It's kind of funny. You know, you go get a lease and the, and the lease means false. Lying. And the world goes after lies. Last night we went out to try to give gospel tracts to the, to the local Catholic church. and. They don't want it. They want Queen Mary. Though the Bible says she can't do nothing. They want the Pope. Though there's no hope in the Pope. They want their priest and you can't even trust him, maybe, with your children. We want lies. We want religion. We want works. We want science. We want evolution. We want the lies. And when you say Jesus is the way and the truth, we don't want that. And we've had supposedly Christians, and I don't know, but when we're preaching in the street, they're going, well, that's not what I would do. I let my light shine. You turn people away. 
Well, isn't Jesus the way? Isn't Jesus true? Doesn't the Bible say go into all the world and preach to God? Well, yeah, but I, what's the problem? They want some falsehood. And what's the falsehood for them? They don't want their friends and relatives and people to know, well, I'm a Christian. Because as you're getting beat up, as people are making fun of you, as people are scorning, I don't want that to happen to me. I want to live a false life. I want the world to love me. Oh, I love Jesus, but I just don't want the world to know I do. And that's living a false life. Why are you going after that? Why are you going after vanity and false? They're not going to get you nothing with God. I mean, you just imagine standing at the, at the judgment seat of Christ for Christians only. I was a Republican. Oh, what was that again? What? What on earth is Republican? And you had the great white throne judgment. Lost people. I was a Baptist. What's that? What's a Baptist? I don't know what a Baptist is. There's no Baptists here. Any Baptists? No. You say Baptist, is it false? Is it a lie in religion? If you end up at the judgment seat of Christ, I mean, if you end up at the great white throne judgment, a Baptist, yeah, it was. Because the Baptist didn't put you into the blood of Lord Jesus Christ and by the gospel of Jesus Christ, not of works least any man boasts. Listen, there can be saved people in the Catholic Church if they put their faith in Jesus. But if their salvation is the Catholic Church, then you're not saved. It's falsehood. I'm a Baptist, but I can go anywhere because I'm a born again Bible believing Christian. If 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 tomorrow morning the news came out the proclamation, the the Baptist Church all over the world is destroyed and gone. I, I don't know what happened, but if it were to be gone, you ain't gonna touch my religion because I don't have a religion called Baptist. I have a salvation called Jesus Christ. Now, what if you wake up tomorrow morning the Pope makes a declaration? As of this day, the Catholic Church is closed. We're done. We're finished. We're no more. We're locking all the doors. We're sending all the priests home. We don't employ the nuns no more. No more services. No more mass. You know what that would mean? That would mean damnation for billions, if not trillions, of living Catholics. Never mind those that have died in their church. Because for some without the Catholic Church or some without the Baptist Church or some without the Presbyterian Church, uh, if my church doors were locked tomorrow, I'm in trouble. And that's where you have a religion. You don't have salvation in Jesus. And for some, oh, if my pastor died, hello, yeah, what happened? Pastor died? Oh, no, what am I going to do? I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. See, you now your salvation is your pastor, not Jesus. That's falsehood. Not, not counting the pastor, that's your own falsehood. Because Jesus said, I am the truth. There's no vanity with Jesus. There are saved people in the Catholic Church. There are saved people in the Baptist Church. There are saved people in the Presbyterian Church. There are saved Jehovah Witnesses. But when the Jehovah Witnesses and the Presbyterian and the Baptist and the Catholic, when that is your merit of going to heaven, then you got falsehood. Sila, there's that musical rest that we saw before. And uh, as I've been taught, a second Advent uh, reference to the Lord Jesus Christ coming. And what would be the second Advent reference? The tribulation, verse chapter 2. Where would they be going after vanity and leasing? The Antichrist. That is their hope. That is their one. That is their leader. That is the one of all one. That's the one who died and came back to life and made a life to an image. Ooh. And they hate God and Jesus Christ. But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly. All right. Here's the seal of second advent reference. Ready? There's godly for himself. And the Lord will hear when I call upon him. What's that? That's when Lord Jesus Christ comes back to separate the goats from the sheep. The sheep that are righteous, they go in. They go with the Lord. 
The goats who have done everything against God and everything against Jesus and against that of the Bible and that is wrong and right against the right, they go off into lake of, they go off into hell. Now David again, he says, Listen, guys, I just prayed to the Lord. I'm like, Lord, are you listening? Now, did David believe that? Did David really believe God, you're not listening to me? Watch what he says. Watch what he said. For himself. The Lord will hear when I call upon him. So David didn't believe verse 1. And when I get those things like, God, are you come on, Lord, you know what my prayers are. You know what I'm asking for. You're not answering. You're not listening. I, I know he is. I'm just angry. I'm upset that it hasn't come. I, I'm feeling dead. I, I, you know, I got human emotions. But I do not believe that God... You know, he's up there with his hands in his ears. David believed God answered. He just got a little down in the dumps, got a little worried. And we all do that. If you don't, you sin, you need to repent. He said, and they, the great advice of the sons of men, stand in awe and sin not. That's good. All right, we're all sinners. Put the effort to. Don't do it. Don't do that sin. And we read today as a family in, in 1 John chapter 2, you know, brethren, sin not. But if you sin, we have an advocate, the Lord Jesus, which David don't have right now. We're going to sin. Put the As a Christian, can we say absolutely we're not going to sin? Uh, I don't think so. Not with our thoughts, not with our actions. But when we do sin and we try not to sin, we can go to Jesus Christ and we can confess that sin, but put the effort in that sin that you love to do. Put that effort and say, no, I don't want to do it. God, I need help. I'm tired of it. Commune with your own heart upon your bed. You talk to yourself. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this when I'm doing? Why am I sinning? What is the purpose of sin? What is it going to get me that I'm doing this sin? And how righteous is God? And what would happen if I just tell God, you know what, take this sin from me and cleanse me of the sin? Commune with your heart, not your head. And be still. Be sure. Sila. Offer the sacrifice of righteousness. Now for the Old Testament, that was the blood. You got to go to the tabernacle. You got to do what the priest prescribed for you to do <coughs> what you've done. For us, he was made uh, sin for us who knew no sin that we might attain this righteousness of God in him. The righteousness that we have, and I blow that. I'm trying to learn that verse. I keep blowing it. Is the righteousness of Jesus Christ and not mine. Not, but there's none righteous. No, not one, but Jesus. So when I sin, offer the sacrifice of righteousness. What do I do as a born-again Bible-believing Christian on this side of Calvary? I go to the righteous one, Jesus. Jesus, I sin. I need you to wash me in that sins with your blood. Now, don't tell me this baloney that, oh, they look forward to the, to the cross. When David says offer your sacrifice, David means you go to the tabernacle, you go to the priest, and you find out if it's a goat or whatever you need to bird, bring or a turtle dove. Don't you go for this nonsense, oh, they look forward to the cross. Absolutely not. And put your trust in the Lord. Oh, how's that? Confess your sins. Do what God's told you to do on this side of Calvary. Repent and, and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Confess your sins. Put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and trust the Lord and nothing else. There may be, yeah, there be many that say, who will show us any good? Okay, so where are we going to get good from? What is good? Well, in the realm of man, if you were to take 100 men and line them up in women, of all ages, of all races, all colors, males and females, 
And he would start down the line and say, listen, here's a piece of paper. I want you to write down one thing that's good and one thing that's bad. And you would probably get a hundred different answers. My good is not your good. That's why when the people, uh, I, re, I rebuke them, well, uh, we're, we're preaching to them, we're telling them to God, oh, I'm good. Well, what, man, what manner of good do you get good from? What is the definition of good? I don't do this. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't. Okay, well, I know a Christian witness and did everything that she was supposed to and she smoked. Are you saying she's not good? I know Christians I've met through the years, they struggle and they fight alcoholism. They love the Lord and they fight that sin with tears. And they plead for the, the man that is God trying to guide their life. They plead with them and say, man, will you pray with me? Will you? I want to stop this. And the alcohol has got so attached in their life. They can, are you saying they're not good? You get a man, he's on death row for a heinous crime. They're about to pull the lever, inject him, or whatever how they're going to do it. At that moment, before he, he dies, he receives Jesus Christ as his Savior. Glorified like the dying thief on the cross. Are you going to say he's not good? Oh, I'm good. And let's say, let's just say for a thing. They come, oh, I'm good. Okay, Santa, good. What if you end up at the Great White Stone Judgment? What do you do with your good? Evidently, you weren't good. Because he says, many will say, who will show us any good? The Lord. Lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Who's going to show us good? The Lord. Where do you get it? David. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Probably Joshua. Uh, maybe Judges. Not sure if you have Ruth. Definitely not First Samuel. That, that's him right there. Where would we today get good? The 66 books only, only of the King James Bible. <coughs> that's good. That's the measuring. You have to have a standard of measuring of what is good. Now, again, I say if you take 100 people and say, write down a piece of paper what is good, all right? Let's take 100 people. 25 have been in jail their entire life. 25 work for a living, work hard at their job. They, they supply the needs of their family. They love their family, and they do a good, hard job. 25 people are in politics. Their whole job is politics. And then 25 people, they're just wanderers around. They just get along in life. What kind of good are you going to get when they write down what is good? Again, you've got a hundred different answers. And you can't let somebody come, well, I'm a good person. What is a good person? I don't. What about someone else does and has more morals than you do? What if somebody comes up to me and says, well, I'm a good person? And let's say the guy's sleeping around in his wife. I'm a good person. What about the guy that don't do it? What about what Jesus said? Who sort of looked upon a woman to lust after his heart has already committed adultery? What if that man, okay, he's faithful to his wife, he's good. Uh, what do you do when a woman walks by in a bikini? Are you still good? Oh, yeah, I'm faithful to my wife. Uh, but Jesus said there was adultery. Well, I, I don't look at, I don't care what you don't look at. What does the Bible say? What does the Lord say? The Lord has sent 66 books to say, this is good and this is not good. That's the rule. And that's what they need to, that's what they need to rule their life with. And when they look at what God says is good, all right, I'm good. I go to church. I do this. I do this. I do that. And I do this. And I do this and do that. What about coming down from heaven, God manifested in the flesh? Well, we'll just say he's, Jesus is not God. Okay. That's not good. Let's say God came down, manifested in the flesh, 100% man, 100% God. And he lived an absolutely sinless life. Okay? Now, what's your good do? Compared to Jesus Christ, the perfect, you're no good. 
So you're going to stand before God and think God's going to let you into heaven because you haven't done five sins, but you've done 500 others. Well, I didn't know I did that because you haven't read the standard. There are people who have sinned, Christians and non-Christians, they're sinning and they don't even realize they're sinning because they don't study the Bible. One of the big things I press and I push is your thought life is, is sinning against God and you need to repent of your thoughts. I don't hear that out of pulpits. Pride is a sin. And many people say, well, I'm good. Bingo, pride. You're no good. In order to make the statement, I'm good, you have pride in yourself. You have self-worship, even to the little tiny bit, even the little bit tiny pride, enough to make that statement, you sinned. And you've also bared a false witness. You're a liar. Because the Bible says, and I preach to him, there is none that doeth good, no, not one. You may be a good mother, good grandmother. You may, may be good to your, your, your employer. You may, that may be good. But are you God's good? And you need the light. What is the light? The light is the word. John chapter 1. The word is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way. That's good. Jesus said, I am the truth. That's better. And I am the light. A lot of people are doing good and the good is not true. A used cars man will, will, will make a lot of money. He'll bring money home, take care of his family. But he probably deceived the, the buyers of the car. That's not good. Doing what you're supposed to be doing for your family and deceiving and lying to others, that's not good. Maybe not to the person doing it, but to somebody who got deceived, that's not good. Thou, God, has put gladness in my heart. Wait a minute, David, I thought God wasn't answering you. Right now, listen, I, I'm, 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 my wife died. I'm praying for another wife. And sometimes, you know, God, you're not listening. Where is she? I got no patience. I got gladness in my heart. I got sorrow that, you know, <coughs> I'm lonely, but I got gladness in my heart. Catholic Church last night, were, man, I was just happy. Because I know what they would do with Jesus. They do the same thing to Jesus, what they did to us. Get them out of here. We don't want them here. Don't bring that word here. More than in the time that their corn and their wine increase. Now, what's that? Harvest. And in the lands of Italy, Israel, and the Middle East land, it was a celebration. And it was a celebration in America, too, when harvest came. In September and October, we would the Americas would have the fairs, the county fairs, the booths. It would be listen. We finally we grew all all year long. We've come to the crop raising time. We've picked all the crops. And we're just going to celebrate with the family. Some people did it with the fairs, and some people did it with the carnivals. Some people had the fellowships at the church, and they listen. There was gladness. And most of the feasts of Israel are centered around the harvest. Man, when they're banging that, that, that grapes out to make uh, uh, the, the wine and all that, they're just playing the music, they're singing, they're rejoicing. Thank you, God, for your bounty. David says, you know what? I've got more gladness than the crops have come in. I will both lay me down in peace. Only God can give peace and sleep. Now that goes with uh, verse 5 in ch chapter 3. I laid me down and slept. And that's where you get, I laid me down to sleep, made my Lord my soul to keep. Blah, blah. What's wrong with that, what I just said? I laid me down. It's not Bible. Chapter 3, verse 5, chapter 4, verse 8. I lay me down to sleep from the Lord, my soul. To That's not in the Bible nowhere. You are teaching your children false memory verse. You want a verse for them to do? You have chapter 3, verse 5, and chapter 4, verse 8. There's Bible. And you didn't even know I lay me down to sleep was not Bible, did you? But it's cute. So is a lot of Satan's lies. Oh, that's, just a, that's a cute little carol. And it's 100% wrong. That's why I do the biblical truth of our hymns. Now look at the Lord giving him peace and sleep. 
For thou, Lord, only makes me to dwell in safety. And David had a life on the run. And the only time he was at peace and safety and all that, he said, I got it from God. I didn't get it from prescriptions. I didn't get it from medicine. I didn't get it from doctors. I got it from the Lord. And listen, he had many times anxiety, fears, troubles, anguish, mad. God. 